Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode of the Project Workbench. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Ted Smith, Hollywood professional, director, prop maker, model maker, costume maker, all kinds of amazing stuff. Ted, yes, thank sir. you so much for joining us today. How long have you been doing this? Roughly 22 years, I think. Okay. Roughly. Okay. Yeah, roughly. Uh, I came out here and... Came out here from where? Uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Born okay. and raised. And, and I'll tell you what, St. Louis, Missouri is a great place to be from. To, to do what you want to do in this industry, yeah, you gotta I, 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 like, get out and come out. Um, I had a friend of mine who moved out. Mm -hmm. and that's what started the ball rolling. Uh, my friend Wyatt, uh, he left and said, I'm going to Hollywood, where are you in business? I'm like, yeah, dude, good luck. And he was out there a week. Mm -hmm. I get a phone call at work. I worked at this cubicle downtown Los Angeles. Little box and my phone rings. I pick it up. And, hey, he goes, Hey, I'm working on the zombie movie. I'm like, What? <laughs> Just a week. You haven't been there a week and you're working on a zombie movie? And he said, Ted, half the stuff I'm seeing on set is not even close to what you do hmm. right now. He goes, You can blow the doors off. So you were, you were doing it as a hobbyist? Yes, okay. as a hobbyist. I was okay. just like all the people I see now on Facebook and stuff, these kids doing amazing work. And I said, that's why I started from, but unfortunately for me, it was uh, cardboard, duct tape, <laughs> uh, poster board. I think I made a Stormtrooper suit out of poster board. Once nice. <laughs> Michael Mache, Darth Vader, Hellman, because he had no concept of back your form. And right. Plastic. Well, maybe you were a trailblazer. You were like doing Pepecura before <laughs> they even had that. So, hey, that's amazing. So, so you moved out. Yes, sir. And then did you get a job on that zombie movie? Uh, no, unfortunately. Being in Hollywood, they shoot things fast. So by the time I came out, yeah, it was all done and gone. It took me for a while because I realized once I planted the seed, like I'm going, mm -hmm. I gave my 30 day notice, mm -hmm. had my work, mm -hmm. and uh, quit my job, basically rented a truck, packed my entire life in the back of a U-Haul truck, and my dear friend Tom came out with me. I think back about that days and like, me right now, I would never do anything like that. Really? I would, too it's adventurous, like, too what, well, risky? You, yeah, I had, there was like, I had no job security, I didn't yeah. meet anybody, I didn't have a portfolio, I didn't have a resume, I had nothing. I'm like, I'm going. And you think back about it, and, that's, and unfortunately, that uh, I know, ignorant bliss mm -hmm. that you have when yeah. you're younger is something you somewhat need. Can I take from what you're saying that if someone knew what they were getting into, they would never do it? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the dangers? Like, what? Give me a little, give me some feedback about the film industry. Like, if someone wanted to start a career as a prop maker, model maker, costumer, G give me some pitfalls, like what should they be weary of? What do uh, they need to do? Well, I can say what you need to have mm -hmm. is love it. Mm -hmm. Love okay. what you do. Be prepared to work for free. Be prepared to intern. Mm -hmm. hmm. Bust your butt, work on independent projects, do independent films, mm -hmm. and build up your portfolio. There's people that have, they're making a student film, or somebody's making a short, or it's a Halloween costume, or you're making your own costumes. Photograph your work. And not just the finished product. Take progressions of Interesting. if you're doing it. And therefore, when people like look at something, go, that's just great. And I just recently did this. I was at a premiere, and I saw an amazing um, Halo suit. Mm -hmm. This thing was amazing, beautiful, armored suit. And I was at this uh, Comic-Con premiere, and I did the most treacherous thing. And I, <laughs> I, had, and I feel so bad, I want to apologize to him. He's out there. <laughs> I walked up to him and said, that's amazing, where'd you get that? <sighs> This guy did this amazing suit. It was beautiful. It was all handmade. As you said, you've been doing this for a while now. So tell me, like, um, I mentioned Pepecure earlier. Like, that's a new technology that has really opened up a lot of doors for hobbyists. What new tools do you use that affect your day-to-day -day stuff? Or, or are you sort of old school and you're still using the same stuff you did when you came out here in 1989? Uh, what I learned when I came out as a kid is just, um, Silicone. I was when I realized that you could mold something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mind blown. It was mind. <laughs> that you were, as you were young, you made it by hand. Yeah. Hands, and then I came out and I started learning about silicone molds. And I said, just you know, sticking things in a, to a piece of foam core and pouring a mold in these massive amounts of detail out of plastic parts. You're like, oh my god, yeah. this is amazing. And of course, I got into it was model making. But then as we started getting make into makeup, these guys would make these helmets and molds, they make silicone molds, and there's mm -hmm. this thing called matrix mold making, mm -hmm. where these mm -hmm. guys would take a headpiece, they'd sculpt this beautiful helmet, and they would like clay it up and make a shell, and then put the shells on it, and they'd pop the shell off, take the clay out, put it back on, drill holes, and fill it with silicone, it was just like mind-boggling mm -hmm. to watch these guys do it, it's a real science, and I was blown away and intimidated by it, I'm like, this is amazing, but silicone cost a fortune, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was 
always living as a, still making the movie industry, I was still a fan. I still wanted to build my own costumes. Then I realized, oh, I can't, you know, make a Matrix mold on right. a budget, you know? <laughs> and, and that's when I worked on a sci-fi film with Steve Wang, which is like his big directing video. It was called The Guyver. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I worked with these guys from Japan, and they're all foam fabricating. And in Japan, you watch those TV shows and Kamen Rider, and the guys in the motorcycles and the monster shows and Power Rangers, those guys have a week to make a monster suit in mm. Japan. A week. Granted, there's a team of them, yeah. but they have a week from concept to drawing. They draw it up, and then and they, they shoot they, in they, a week. They, they basically give the drawing to these guys. Like, here's our monster. Shoot in a week because the the TV shows, the volume Jeez. of shows. Yeah. There's a company in Japan called Rainbow, mm -hmm. and they were the companies that made these suits, and they had a team of people, and they're all foam fabricators. So and you watch these shows. Now hold on, let me stop right there. So foam fabrication. Give me a quick overview of what's involved in foam fabrication. Foam fabrication is uh, upholstery foam, sheet foam, there's some dense foams called L200 which is a closed cell foam mm -hmm. and it's the kind of foam you get inside, uh, if you've ever seen like a hockey helmet sure. or shoulder pads, there's a really dense gray foam mm -hmm. and the big thing is, uh, so is all the fans out there catch on it, is all the f gray floor mats that hook together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ironically that's L200, it's a mm -hmm. different grade of it. but. And I think that's fantastic. These guys are like grabbing what's available to them, mm -hmm. but you can buy it mm -hmm. in bulk in sheets and you can get different thicknesses. Mm -hmm. So there's no mold making, there's no sculpting, it's no. just, just and, foam. And that's what got me excited. I worked with this guy, Asal Goto, mm -hmm. and I was kind of like, I, oh, here's a story. I was so young, as I was saying earlier, being ambitious, I came out here, I didn't know a lot of people, met Steve Wang, mm -hmm. and we hit it off, and I got pulled on to work on the guy where, I was getting paid 50 bucks a day, but I didn't care. I was loving it, I was loving it. I was a sponge, I was sucking up all this knowledge, and I worked with Sal Goto, and I would watch these guys foam fabricate these monsters, and Steve had a budget, hmm. so all the hero suits, the big main guys, were mm -hmm. beautifully sculpted, mm -hmm. and they sculpt these amazing monsters, but they need background monsters, and mm -hmm. that's where Sal came in, and I kind of worked with Sal, and we foam fabricated, and I learned just cutting corners on how to make monsters on a budget. And mm -hmm. it was really amazing. So once I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So then I started going, oh my God, this is this is amazing. If I can make a monster suit, I can make a full body piece of armor. I don't have to like sculpt and mold. And, and, and eventually I started like doing things at home. Mm -hmm. Like all you guys doing something in your closet. Mm -hmm. 